Stop that. I want to talk to you about kissing again, all right? I've been meaning to ask you about that. I want to know why I would want to do it. <laughs> physical pleasure. Won't you do anything on your planet that includes physical pleasure? Oh, yes. There's one thing, and it's against the law, and I, I can't tell you. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, we're having a man-to-man -man talk here or whatever. Uh, tell me. All right. Yeah. When a woman touches a man here... <laughs> it drives me zazbat. Let me get this straight. You're telling me if somebody touches oh, you oh, here... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, folks, a clip from uh, the uh, first episode of Mork and Mindy. We'll have more uh, in the Gimme Five coming up after our, our segment here where we uh, uh, bring you uh, various uh, uh, blocks uh, from uh, various things that uh, Robin Williams did. Uh, joining us now to talk about what we've learned uh, today, Dr. Jeffrey Gardier, America's psychologist and assistant professor at Turo College of Medicine. Hello, doctor. Uh, great to be uh, with you, Steve. Always good to talk to you, and I always appreciate your time. Of course, uh, the uh, uh, press conference earlier today where we find out that Robin Williams um, uh, hanged himself uh, with a belt. Uh, he died of asphyxia due to hanging. There were also superficial uh, cuts on his left wrist, uh, indicated that they occurred uh, with a knife and that he was uh, being treated for depression. The toxicology report will be out in a couple of weeks. So. You know, for, for first let me ask you this. First let me ask you this. We see so many funny men, so many comedians, and he was more than that, but nonetheless, um, you know, addicted on drugs, overdosed, killed themselves. Why is that? Well, because funny men are people who give their humor, uh, their shtick, if you will, comes out of the pain uh, that they've experienced early in life and perhaps through different periods of their lives. Uh, funny men, women, uh, tend to be very intelligent individuals who like to work out their issues, their routines uh, on stage, but a lot of that material comes from a lot of the emotional pain that they have uh, experienced. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of the tears of a clown kind of syndrome, right? Exactly. Yeah. All right, so let, let's talk a little bit about uh, what we uh, jump to the, the, uh, the very end here, the latest uh, from today. Uh, when you find out that, um, you know, he hanged himself, uh, what, what does that tell you, if anything? I mean, there are all, all kinds of different ways to kill oneself, I would imagine. Well, we see that uh, women perhaps uh, choose, who, who make more suicide attempts than men, but men have more lethal attempts and therefore die more than women. But what we see with women, for example, they try to choose methods uh, that may be not only less lethal but less painful. For example, overdosing with pills. So to hang oneself with a belt, uh, to have cuts on the wrist, uh, tells me that this is something that was somewhat violent and he may have been in some sort of a crisis when he did this to do something uh, that is so violent. Yeah. Um, when, when someone of his stature, um, who is, you know, constantly in the spotlight everywhere he goes, how much does that make it better, make it worse? In other words, if you're depressed and you have uh, uh, problems, and, you know, I believe he went back in July uh, to rehab, uh, so if you have those kind of problems and you're John Doe who works at the bank and nobody knows you, that's one set of circumstances. When you're Robin Williams, that's another. Which one is harder and which one is easier or does it depend on the person? Well, it really does depend on the person. Uh, for the uh, average guy working at the bank uh, to be able to get the support of others, let others know that he or she may be struggling, uh, I, I think is a certainly a very positive thing in that people, if they see red flags, will say, hey, listen, you got to get help or you got to take some time off. Someone like Robin Williams, uh, this is a guy who was super manic. In fact, uh, he did say he had bipolar uh, a manic disease, but he is a super manic guy. He's in the face of the public. Uh, he's a comic genius. He's a philanthropist. He helps people out in a really interesting way that enabled his own illness in that people just couldn't believe someone who's so happy, so smart, so funny, 
could do something like this, but it does tell us this was a guy who was in legitimate pain, Steve. I mean, he had a cocaine problem for years, alcohol problem for years, so we know he's self-medicating, and then the depression in the bipolar. So this was someone who was suffering, but was able to hide it from the public with his comic antics. Yeah, now talk about the depression. I mean, lots of people are depressed. D does, does it usually uh, uh, follow that you're depressed and you go to drugs, or, uh, or can you be off the drugs and, and, and obviously and still be depressed, but does the drug pass play into it? What, what, what's typical? Well, what we typically see is someone with a depression, yes, there may be a proclivity to using drugs, but not because they're a bad person, we know that. It's because they're self-medicating and makes them feel better. As a matter of fact, when we get them into rehab, we detox them, and then they are put on antidepressants or other psychiatric drugs, and those then uh, replace the illegal drugs that the person may have been taking. So it's important that if you're in a very severe, deep depression and the talking therapy by itself is not doing the job, that you also, in tandem, should be on some sort of antidepressant medication. But, Steve, the problem is a lot of these antidepressants, a lot of psychiatric medications, if not all of them, have side effects, and it's those side effects that make people miserable and make them non-compliant, which then throws them further into depression or possibly into a substance abuse issue. If you're, if you have failed at substance abuse, or you've, 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 uh, you know, you've gone back to it after rehab, and you just recently, a month ago, reportedly went back to rehab. Um, do you view that then? Does that add to the depression? I failed. I can't beat this. Uh, is that a? Does that um, contribute to and enhance the degree of depression possibly? It's a great question, Steve. People who do um, use drugs or have been or are addicts all their lives, even if they've been clean, we still call them addicts, and they, they accept that because they know they have to be on top of the problem. Uh, these individuals, uh, when they relapse, they hate themselves. They have guilt. They feel worthless. They feel that they've let everyone down. But we clearly know as part of psychological and psychiatric uh, um, science that relapse is part of drug abuse. When you relapse, it means that you have to refigure the way that you're living your life and you tend to do better after the relapse. And that's what happened with him. He relapsed after 20 years and then decided to go back, thank goodness, to getting help. But I think it was too little, uh, too late. Uh, is there, I, I would imagine you're gonna tell me that it's pretty consistent, but I'll, I, 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 that's just my guess. Um, the percentage of Hollywood actors, famous people who lapse into these kinds of addictions and lapse into this kind of depression uh, and maybe even uh, commit suicide or attempt suicide. Is the percentage basically the same as the general population? Or, uh, you know, I don't want to say, or the pressure is so great because to me, the guy in the bank might have had a lot more pressure meeting his mortgage every month. So, so not pressure necessarily, but you know, is it the famous and the wealthy and, and, and the people like Robin Williams, that community have a higher percentage or is it consistent with the rest of the population? You know, quite honestly, I'm not really sure what the statistical numbers are, and that's something I want to do some research on uh, and because I think it is a great question. But I will tell you this. We know that with the Hollywood folks, it's uh, much more high profile sure. uh, when they become drug abusers. And we also see there are a lot more enablers. The poor schmo on the street who has a drug abuse problem is going to get locked up is going to be put in a psychiatric hospital, is going to be shunned by his or her um, loved ones, uh, will be isolated, may end up homeless. The Hollywood person who gets on drugs, the people around them are going to say, well, as long as they're working, the studio will keep putting the right. money in. Right. As long as they're doing their thing, we're still going to love them because we think that they're demigods. And in many ways, we enable their drug use. It's part of being an artist, but it's, it's all poppycock. One more for you, Doc. Uh, if there is a note, and, you know, for the, uh, for the officer to say we're not commenting on that makes it sound, I could speculate that there was a note. What could we look for, and, and how, how much can you learn from notes? Well, notes uh, gives you, will give you the inner workings of that particular individual, uh, what led them perhaps to the suicide, and what their wishes are 
uh, after they're dead. So, yeah, you know, notes are tragic to find, but it really does give us a better, if you will, psychological autopsy as to what may have led to the suicide and what that person may want afterwards for family and friends. And, and we still um, praise these people who have these problems and would even take their own life. Uh, the public adores Robin Williams, and this doesn't change that, does it? No, it doesn't change it, and the fact of the matter is we don't want to victimize a victim. Uh, we know that it is poor judgment, but when you are in the throes of a deep, deep depression and you have the substance abuse issues, you are not in your right mind. Right, right. This is a brain disease. Right. This is a situation of where your brain has changed from the drug abuse, from the depression, gotcha. so you certainly Doctor, are not getting straight. Doctor, always great to talk to you. Dr. Jeffrey Gardier, America's psychologist, thank you, sir, very much. Up next, give me five more from Robin Williams.